Hi there, I'm Artist Rob Reeve and welcome back to my studio. Uh, once again, I'm uh, from here from my, my gallery. I've got a, a one month pop-up gallery going on here in Warren, Arkansas. and I may be doing it again at some point, but for now at least, uh, this is, this is going to be just a one month thing here uh, in the portion in this, this month of December here in, uh, in 2017. So if you're watching this after December 2017, my gallery is, is no longer in this location in Warren, Arkansas, but uh, it was just a pop-up gallery for a short period of time. But I have been filming some stuff here, so uh, I wanted to give you guys an update on a piece that you saw um, me actually do the underpainting for. This is it. Um, it's a painting titled Castle Peaks. Uh, let, me, let me know what you think of it. This is, this is the finished product. This is how it turned out. Um, Drop me a comment uh, in the comment section below and let me know what you think of this painting. I, I've, I've worked pretty hard on it uh, for a number of hours. It's got a lot of time in it, but um, what I, the reason I, I wanted to shoot this video today, um, you guys saw the underpainting stage of this, and uh, obviously I think you're probably expecting to see the detail portion of it, and I, I forgot to, to let you guys in on the fact that I wasn't going to be filming the detail portion of this painting and I wanted to let you know what what's going on uh, why why I'm not filming uh, the detail portion of this particular piece and why there may be some more videos in the future that, that are not like that I'm this is still a relatively new YouTube channel at the time that I filmed this uh, I've got uh, still under a hundred a hundred subscribers at the moment but I know uh, you guys may watch this later I may have more but uh, just never know where the channel will go but for those of you that are watching this I want to thank you for, for supporting me and supporting um, the cause of art because that's what I love but I uh, did want to fill you guys in you guys are part of my art family and uh, I wanted to let you know what's going on um, typically my, my art career has taken taken different paths over the years I've been painting uh, probably for a total of, of five years um, all things considered now that's hard for some people to believe but I'm, I'm a young painter I started when I was in high school. I think I've told you guys that before, but but all in all, I'm a I'm a young painter, and and I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to do things every day better than I did before because you're you're really only as good as your last painting. You really are. That's that's my philosophy. Every painting I do, I try to do better than the last one. Uh, and they're all different, but but I try to learn new techniques and try to grow. Uh, and the reason I didn't film the detail portion of this painting for you guys to watch is because. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm kind of a moody painter. I don't know if you guys are that way, but I'm a moody painter. Um, I have to I have to get into a certain mindset to do it. Uh, and a lot of times, especially if I'm in the studio, it's easy to do get into mindset of painting when you're outdoors. You know, you sh you're seeing the beautiful surroundings of the landscape. Uh, you're seeing all of God's wonderful creatures roaming around in, in this beautiful place that we call Planet Earth. Uh, but for me, um, when I'm outside, that's e it's easy to get into the mindset of enjoying painting in the studio when you're when you're got the lights on and they're buzzing and um, you know you some of you guys at home may have may have children at home the children are running around the house it's it's sometimes hard to get into that that mood to paint but for me when I get moments of solitude that's when I like to paint I love to paint just put a little music on in the background sometimes or I even watch Andy Griffith a lot when <laughs> my wife will tell you I watch a lot of Andy Griffith when I'm painting because it's peaceful and uh, painting to me is, is something that I enjoy and I want it to be peaceful. Uh, so solitude to me is extremely important, especially when I'm doing my professional pieces. This is one of my professional pieces and um, the, the honest reason why I didn't, didn't film the detailed portion of this painting uh, along so that you guys could join me is because I wanted, I wanted it to be its absolute best. And uh, this one's gonna be destined for a gallery um, at, some, at some point and it needed to be top notch. And for me to bring my A game, um, I sometimes need that absolute solitude. So I hope you guys can understand that. I do wanna to explain to you some of the techniques that I did use. And I wanna leave you totally hanging. I want you to be able to get a little something out of this because you guys saw, the, saw where it started off um, in the last, last video in this, in this playlist. But um, I have done a, quite a bit of work since then and hopefully it shows up. Uh, first, first thing that I did, I didn't touch the sky. The sky was spot on, and I'm really proud of that. Um, while it is a a minute part of this of this painting, it has a big impact, and it it was needed. It was necessary uh, to just leave it alone. That's all I had to do to it. But I did have some problems uh, with with the the mountain. 
the actual ridge line because you're already in this painting the perspective you're kind of already up in the mountains this is kind of a uh, an upper upper mountain lake uh, painting um, and when I actually have I have two two critics that come in a lot and and look at my work one of them is my wife and she is she is a, a good critic of my work she I can always depend on her to give me an honest opinion of my work and I encourage you at home if you have somebody in your family that that tends to be a tough critic use them uh, because we I'm an, as an artist I'm already tough on my own work uh, but sometimes I can be a little a little you know a little uh, sensitive about how things turn out because when I first finish something I want it to be so right and sometimes that can cloud my own judgment so my wife helps me out she balances that out very well and she she's honest with me about what looks good and what doesn't um, she she liked the way it was going she thought there was it still needed to be detailed obviously it did but then my, my other my other critic that that I value her opinion is, is my mom my mom's the person who really um, got me started in painting and uh, I, I value both my wife and my mother's opinions about my art very much. They're, they're, not, they're not fine art critics. They're, they have not spent a ton of time in galleries. They, they haven't worked in any galleries. My mom's a school teacher and my wife is a dog groomer. Uh, but they, they know what looks good and I value that. Uh, and I encourage you, don't, don't count somebody out just because they haven't been around art a lot. People, the, the human, especially when it comes to landscapes, the human mind is built to understand them because we've lived in them for, for millions of years. Um, uh, since, since this earth was created, things have, have, erosion's been taking place. All of these elements of rain and ice, uh, snowpack, it's all been affecting the landscape. And when, when humanity ca came into it, our ancestors came into it, um, they, they've had to live in it for, for a few thousand years. And um, we're built for it. We're kind of hardwired for this landscape stuff. So uh, just be, be ready. There are going to be people who don't like your work. You will find those who are honest, though, about it and, and use those people. Now, enough of that. Let's, let's get into this, though. I, but my mom, my mom thought that, the, um, thought that the, the mountain was a little bit tough to distinguish from the clouds. And I could have used that to my advantage. I could have said, okay, well, it's kind of a stormy, stormy scene. But the, kind of what I'm portraying in this, in this painting is the fact that those that, that snowstorm has, is starting to dissipate and there's, there's a, a little bit of light starting to peek through, but it's still, the mountain was a little too hazy. So what I did, I went back in with some darker color, heavy on the ultramarine blue. I darkened up this mountain just a little bit, this ridge line, just, just a hair. I didn't really touch the snow a whole lot, except uh, we'll see here in kind of the, the, the foreground here in just a minute or two. But uh, then obviously I started laying in my highlights on these trees. Um, which was, you know, pretty pretty simple combination. Again, I was using a pretty limited palette for this painting uh, because I am in my studio and this is my French easel that I've got going, which um, I don't use really, really often, uh, but I do occasionally. Uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, violet, which is not a color that I use real, real, real often, but I did use it on this one because it's what I had in my box. That was my kind of purple. I would use it in the place of dioxazine purple. And then sap green. Uh, occasionally I'll use hooker's green, but, but sap green was, was what I had for this, this, this piece. Uh, so everything was basically dry for the second stage. Did go in and put some, some tree trunks, uh, of these pines, put a dead pine in. I also uh, went back in and highlighted, and at this stage, it's more of a refinement more of a refinement of everything. It's not, it's not changing a ton of stuff, it's just refining and detailing. That's why you say the underpainting is just the underpainting. Basically, the underpainting, you can kind of tell compositionally where you're going at that point. You, it's either working or it's not. Uh, but at this point, when you start to detail, it becomes more realistic. We get that realism in here. But I'm still using those impressionistic broad strokes, uh, and, or in some ways, abstract strokes. I also thought that the trees were a little bit weak uh, in, the, in the background. I darkened them as well. The mountain was darkened, so it just kind of, it kind of fit to darken up, uh, darken up those, those um, uh, kind of deep mid-ground deep mid um, trees that were, that were lingering back there. Same kind of combo of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, violet, and sap green. 
but heavy on the ultramarine blue. I believe in using blue to create that, that depth. And then as I move forward, I kind of desaturate that. I take blue, I, I use lesser amounts of blue as I come forward, particularly in the highlights. That's, that's important to remember. Um, I, didn't, I didn't add a ton of snow in, in the, the ridge line. Uh, I did darken up a little bit and detail some of the corner edging. But if you can notice, the center of the blue is really kind of left, left center, upper portion of this painting. And that's, that's important to remember. Uh, I did get the center off, um, or, or the, the actual, um, what I would call the, where, the, where the eye should end, the end point. Um, I did get that a little bit left of center, which is awesome. That's what I wanted. Um, that, worked, that worked really well. Uh, the water didn't need a ton of work. It, it was actually pretty spot on. Uh, now it's important to remember if you're gonna if you're gonna do this style of painting, you need to tone your canvases. You really need to tone your canvases. I toned this one with burnt sienna. This is a masterpiece pro canvas. Uh, you can't get a better canvas than that unless you you make your own, and even then it's pretty hard to make it as nice as what they do. Uh, but I did tone it uh, with with burnt sienna, uh, and it just. It, this painting illuminates really well, even though it's got some really muted tones. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, pretty rich texture, especially in the rocks and in the tree highlights. Um, I did, uh, in the original photograph that I took, and this, is a, um, this piece was kind of a, a morphing of a couple of different photographs that I took in Colorado, kind of put together. Um, but I did add, there was no, there were no trees in the water. I did add that. Uh, just a nice little touch. It adds a little bit of wildness to it. And, uh, you know, never be afraid to do that in any painting that you do. Don't be afraid to throw in something that's not necessarily already there. Uh, if it's going to make it look better, it's going to make it look better. Use it. That's what we call artistic license. So um, go with it. Uh, the final touch that I thought really, really finished off this painting just, just really well was just a hair of close to pure white. And when I say close, I mean close, but it's not pure white. This little area right in here, and it, you can see a little bit into this area, that's kind of where the eye wants to drift initially into this painting because it's so bright. You can almost see the light from up here. It's kind of giving the illumination that there's a lot, the sun's kind of pouring down from, from this side of the ridge line at this point. But this is actually a combination of titanium white, cadmium yellow, and believe it or not, a little bit of burnt sienna. That burnt sienna kind of grays it or gives a little bit of an earth tone. It kind of softens that, that cad yellow. And go light on both of those colors. If you're, if you're doing a painting like this and you're gonna highlight that snow in a particular area, don't go pure white, but don't go really, really, really yellow. Don't go really, really burnt sienna. It's very important to, to just kind of uh, walk a, walk a tightrope. You really are walking a tightrope with those those three colors, uh, and you can use other colors. You could use cad red. You could use um, cad orange. I really wouldn't do the cad red. That's just not my preference. But you could use it. Um, I use um, cad orange would be more on my my style. Um, I did. Um, my wife actually came in and told me that my shoreline or my lake line uh, was not not strong enough. So I did go back in and I put some dark coloring, uh, just kind of shadow shadow that air, those areas along the lake line. Uh, she, was, she was spot on. Once again, she knew what she was talking about. and um, uh, Just refined the rocks and that was that. So this painting was all done. Again, uh, I'm sorry I didn't film this for you guys, but I'm doing, I'm doing more, um, more and more professional pieces between commissions. If you're kind of wondering why I'm not filming a lot at the moment, I got some really important pieces going and uh, there, some of them are commission work, some of them, some of them are for galleries, and uh, I just, I, I have to concentrate at times. And even though it's usually me and just you guys in, inside that camera, uh, it, it's, I like to have absolute solitude when I paint. You guys let me know about your painting conditions. How about that? Um, tell, tell me what you have to have to paint. Um, I, I'm always interested in finding out new techniques of how to relax while you're painting. Um, uh, for me, that's a really, really integral part of, of the painting process is just being absolutely relaxed. Uh, some people like coffee. I'll drink coffee a little bit here with my when I paint, but, but pretty often than not, I'll get, I'll just I'll drink ice water, maybe a Diet Coke, maybe 
maybe a cup of uh, hot tea, uh, and I just like to, to kick back and listen to music, maybe watch Andy Griffith instead, and, and, and paint in absolute solitude. But I think I'd be happy if I was just painting out in a cabin in the middle of the woods, to be honest. I don't know what you guys would like, but let me know. Let me know in the comments, and, and I'd love to hear your stories. I'm sure everybody's got something different that helps them out. But um, have a great day, everybody. Keep painting, and God bless.